We are the major media service for the not-for-profit sector in Australia and increasingly what I call the social economy, which is that place that comes together between digital and doing good. It's the place where people who are looking um, at meaning as an extra layer of their existence come to find out how to engage. So it covers a whole whole raft of things from volunteering to philanthropy to impact investing, which is a whole new area of investing for good as well as social change, to corporate social responsibility. There's a whole world in there of which giving is just one part. So um, I've been involved in the giving space for a long time and I guess that's, that's my first cab off the rank. I've kind of got two messages for this Giving Australia, um, Giving Tuesdays piece, um, which is, the first one is that, first of all, um, looking for meaning in Giving Tuesday, two messages. Um, giving is a journey, learning to give is a journey, and I'll go into that in a bit more depth with my personal journey. But also, giving is easy, but giving well is hard. So, um, you know, I, and I say that with the, the best, I think giving is great, but what difference do you want to make and how do you do it? I was sitting around a swimming pool in Bali, which is somewhere I go to quite often, every three months, and I was sitting beside a swimming pool with some people who were doing a yoga retreat, which is, I usually do that there too, but it was this group, a Lululemon group, which, whose clothes I quite like, they were talking around, there were an American group of people going, ah, OK, when we get back to America, we're going to get together and we're going to do something that raises money. And I thought, right, for what? No idea. They're just going to get together and they're going to raise money. And for me, that was kind of bizarre. It's like, where is your passion? Move you over a little bit so I can see that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where is your passion, where is your connection to the causes, where is your measurement of the impact that's happening around what you're doing? So why are you doing it? Really look at why you're doing it. And the next, the next little thing I saw, I happened to David Livingston. There was a program on David Livingston, you know, the guy, the explorer in the middle of the jungle, who was actually a mission, missionary who went to Africa. And his epitaph in Westminster Cathedral is, um, and he managed to convert one person in the whole time he was there, but his epitaph is missionary, philanthropist and adventurer. And in everything he did, the philanthropy kind of came to the fore and he's known for posterity for his philanthropy. So it's definitely a good thing to do. So. Um, the philanthropy as a journey bit is really, I mean, I, I started in my 20s when I was working in the dark side in advertising. And I was working for a global advertising agency. And for me, the, the, you know, the bit came when um, the best bit of advertising, working on Shell and BMW and Smarties and things like that. Um, was when I was put on the pro bono client for Ogilvy & Mather, which was the Mental Health Research Institute. And at that point in time, I met the most incredible people working across the agency who came together around this cause. And the rest of my hours were spent on the Barbie fan club and, um, <laughs> and other accounts. But the Mental Health Research Institute started me off. And they then asked me to sit on their fundraising committee. I went to their fundraising committee. And then I kept going on the dark side for quite a while until I had a sabbatical um, when my kids were young. And I decided to start Pro Bono Australia. Since I started Pro Bono Australia, I've been asked onto various boards of philanthropic organisations. And in 2003, it was only in 2003 that I set up my own formal giving um, vehicle, which is a sub fund, a philanthropic sub fund, under the auspices of a community foundation, the Australian Community Foundation, on whose board I'd sat on. For, I sat on for 10 years and I then headed up their grants committee. So I'm now at the point where 
I still don't have time actually to be philanthropic because you've got to have time to set aside what you're going to do, what areas you're going to focus on and how you're going to make a difference. So um, I think the journey of working out and the fund that I set up under the Australian Communities Foundation is a fund for refugees mainly. And that was because my grandparents were refugees to Australia. Um, and I went through this whole process of war reparations and finding out about their history. And I started this sub-fund at the Australian Communities Foundation. So I'm deeply connected to the things that fund, it funds. So for example, um, we were approached by Monash, you know, the Australian Communities Foundation it's a giving vehicle where anyone can set up a sub-fund under its auspices for a very cheap rate of 1% of your funds under management. And um, they will recommend things to give to along your areas of interest. So it, I was on the board for 10 years, but it completely suited the way I wanted to give. So they fed me up a project which was about funding um, some research that's currently being done out at Monash, which was about the effects on health workers servicing refugee communities on their own health, the, like the detrimental effects on health workers' health um, uh, as a part of the picture of the refugee issue, which I thought was really interesting. So I funded that and I funded other things as well. But to get to the point where strategically I worked out what I wanted to do, I had the funding vehicle to set it up in, I had the community around me, the community of donors who also knew um, it took 20 years, yeah? So it's a, it's a journey to a point where I know what I want to fund, I'm connected deeply to the issues and I'm connected into organisations who will help me make a difference. So when you're talking Giving Tuesday, I kind of, there's a bit of me that goes, okay, where, what, how, what's the, what's the impact, what's, how are you going to do that bit? So, um, uh, giving, giving is easy. Um, you can give away to a myriad of different things, um, but giving well is hard. Um, there's a wonderful woman in America called Tracy Geary, and she's kind of developed up um, four different ways to look at your giving. Um, the first is you can give to needs based, so you can give a meal, um, sure, you know, you can give water, you can give something to a need that someone has. Um, you can empower people through education, so empowerment. Um, you can capacity build organisations that support other people. And you can do what's called systemic change. So you can try and change policy or whatever that system feeds up to you. So you can really divide up giving into each of those areas or, or do a mix of those areas. But when you're looking at projects for funding, um, uh, I think that's a really, really helpful way to do it. So philanthropy generally, giving generally, can you see me there? Um, giving generally um, has really um, changed a lot over the last number of years. Um, and in Australia, you see a huge amount happening. Like things like this really didn't happen 10 years ago. I don't, I don't even think they happened five years ago. Um, and there's a few macro things that are happening. So there is, what's happening now is the largest intergenerational transfer of wealth ever. So in America, it looks like $41 billion to the next generation which is a huge figure. So there's some are calling it the golden age of philanthropy is coming, or the golden age of giving. But the nature of the givers are also changing because 40 years ago, 50% of the givers would have been inherited wealth. And these days, only 7% is inherited wealth. So there's a huge generational shift in giving, but there's also a hell of a lot more younger people, people who have made their own money. Um, and those people are looking at 
um, changing the way that they give. They look at giving differently. Their people have made their own money, they've solved their own business problems, so they reckon they can solve their social problems as well. So they're coming to philanthropy not to fund a problem, but to find a solution. So the nature of people coming to philanthropy is really, really changing. And they want to offer um, not only their time, not only their treasure, but they want to offer um, their talents, so their skills, and also their networks, so networks. So I'm talking to you guys who are expressing exactly what's happening. Um, and that's all good because it's bubbling up all over Australia. Um, and again, I come back to the thing, the strategic intent of what you do, how you do it, the journey that people take along the way, along the philanthropic giving route, and also looking at what impact you want to make in your various forms of giving. So that's, that's the blurb. I think that's, um, it, will, it will maybe feed a bit of thought and conversation into the, um, the bubbling up of what you want to do here. Um, but this, what you're doing here, you're not, al not alone in um, uh, the type of thing that you want to do. There's a lot of giving, what you call giving circles. So going back to the change in demographics of the people who are doing this, um, new millennials or millennials um, want to get advice from their peers. If they've made lots of money and been very successful in your own area, then your peers are who you want to talk to because that's how you've worked before. So giving circles are really coming up very strongly and they're a great way to do things um, when you bring in advice and you talk to other people and you look at how solutions are funded. So um, it's all good. It's really amazing what's happening. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be in this environment which I haven't seen before, so thanks, Rashenda. And I'll hand it over to you guys. There's some fabulous um, uh, <laughs> there's so much happening, I could kind of go on forever. Um, but um, impact investing, have you heard of that? which is investing for financial good as well as social outcomes. It's not giving, but it's investing. So it's, it's growing across the world. But in terms of giving, um, there's something called the Funding Network, TIFFIN, which is coming out of England, which is an um, auction where um, social enterprises, like you have an evening like this, and social enterprises, say three social enterprises who've been vetted by the organisers come along, they present their case, and then people, um, it's like an auction, how much can we raise for this group? And you can, you know, donate as little or as much as you want to do. And it's really weird, you think it had kind of become really skewed, but the pilot I went to was really alive. Um, and everyone in the room the, um, gave, and each of the social enterprises ended up getting $10,000 or more to start up their social enterprise. So that, that's one. Um, the other thing is Nexus, which is an international organisation of young philanthropists, had a conference up in Sydney last week or the week before, also linking up networks of people, social, people who have started social enterprises and philanthropy. Um, of course, there's the digital platforms that have come up. There's um, probably five or six online um, uh, apps and uh, websites that generate donations. Um, there's point of giving at point of sale. Um, there's crowdfunding websites coming up. Impact 100, that's um, Vanessa Meekin and yeah, 100 people giving $1,000 uh, $1, each. Um, there's the Billionaires Pledge overseas, which is Gates and his buddies saying, getting a group of 100 billionaires to pull it, put in money to so 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 everyone, it's, it's in the water now. It's, it's fabulous what's happening. Does that answer your question? That's, I'm sure I've left some things out, but it's alive. It's bubbling.
Any, any other questions? Ben, have you got any to answer, to add to that? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, as, as Australians, we're pretty generous. High-end individuals, high net worths, we're pretty bad. Um, particularly compared to America, but we've got a, we started differently. We've got a different tax structure. We're much more of a welfare country, but that being said, high net worths in Australia really are not very good um, at giving their money. And there's, we, we just, we, we, we um, Pro Bono Australia was, and I was one of the judges for the top 50 philanthropic gifts of all time in Australia, and we just put it out three weeks ago. And there's a swag of major philanthropy families, like one of whom is the Maya, a very significant one, um, who were included in that top gifts, who have given for a, much for a long, long time to really, really good projects. But there was also newcomers to that, like St Steve Kalia, who um, has funded the Peace Prize. Um, it was an amazing process, actually, that top 50 gifts. It was wonderful. So things like McRobb High School, yeah, was founded by Mr. McRobertson's, giving £44,000. The chocolate, he was a chocolate maker, yeah. So that got in the top 50. The Miles Franklin Awards, the Walkley Awards, all started with philanthropic giving money. Um, and also there were a couple of um, ones in there that started with far less funds, like three guys sitting around a table giving five pounds each, you know. So there was a whole range that then turned into, um, what was it, Smith family, I think. So yeah, so we're not, we're not great on the high net worths. We're good on the general population giving, but, um, and corporates could probably do better, but that's a whole different discussion, um, yeah. The top 50 um, actually doing that project was exactly that. So it's like if you have a list of the top X, it makes it far more palatable for the media to kind of go, yep, I'll take that and we'll publicise that, which is what happened. And it made it far more visible for people who were philanthropists over a long period of time um, to get some glory, if you like. And we'll see whether it works. But there is a, there is, there is a lot of activity happening amongst that high net worth and I think it's tipping um, in various ways with peer pressure and there's a number of um, you know Chris Cuff, Alan English, Michael Walsh all coming out of you know um, Chris Cuff got a 33 million dollar parachute out of Colonial and he then went and set up um, a fund and he's very verbal about giving back. So. It's, it needs to be peer-to-peer -peer on that kind of level. And yeah, it's happening, it's happening. So it's keeping it, everything, and, and, and it's also got to happen from the ground up. So yeah, very exciting time. Thank you, Karen. I will just add to that as well. Um, a lot of the clients that we work with, a lot of them are charities, but there are a lot of corporations that do great that don't talk about it. So therefore there's no, peer pressure or peer influence. For instance, um, Network Communications, if you've ever heard of them, they are Australia's um, biggest Optus regional franchise. Um, yeah, they're like a resale, but they just look like an Optus store. You wouldn't actually know you're in a network communication store. They get, they're pretty much a social enterprise. They give all, all their profits away to charity. They even have a charity mobile option where you can pick an Optus plan that would be like any other Optus plan and you can give 10% of your bill to charity. So there are, and more and more and more I run into corporates like this that are giving away thousands and thousands of dollars and often their staff don't even know about it, let alone their peers. Because the more that, you know, it's, I think it goes hand in hand with that um, tall poppy or not wanting to talk about you know, the ways that you're being generous because it could be seen as bragging or, you know, not as humble as we should be. Can I just yeah. do this? Actually, going to your point on the Pro Bono website, we've just started up a section of the website called Corporate Community where corporates can actually pay to be listed on the site to 
put a spotlight on their good work. Mm -hmm. And we've got Telstra and NAB and a whole range of corporates because um, we figure they can pay to be on there and show what they do. The news part of our organisation will report on them if they don't do so well. But that's, <laughs> that's life in a big city, you know. Yeah. I'll have to tell our clients about that one. So I'm going to um, hand over to Ben. Thank you, Adelaide, for being so patient. Writing letters, not just financially. 
Um, so here in Australia, I think we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. So the organisation that we've spoken to and who have really jumped on board are really excited about how they can use it. And what's great is that it's not just for not-for-profits and charities. It's, it's really about um, finding uh, this heart of giving across Australia. So we're seeing businesses getting involved and joining in with, with charities. So they, um, they're running their own sort of combined efforts. Um, I think one of the best examples across, um, I guess, uh, from a national perspective is Yelp um, Australia. They're community managers uh, in Melbourne, Adelaide, you know, all across Australia, Singapore, New Zealand as well, are going to be running their own event um, called Giving Shoes Day. Um, and that came out of a sort of a miscommunication between myself and the Adelaide community manager. She thought it was Giving Shoes Day the whole time and got really excited. Um, and then I explained that I was Giving Shoes Day. But she's taking that and um, they're creating uh, local events where their community members can go along to a shoe store and experience what it's like to you know, create a really nice pair of shoes. Um, and that's a lot of what they do. So they, they run a lot of events that pair up with um, local communities or local businesses. But to be a part of that uh, event for Giving Tuesday, um, you need to donate a pair of shoes, which will also go to um, a charity where they support shoes to people who need it. Um, and they've been great. They've been able to get on board with um, with people like uh, Shoes of Prey, who are also supporting their event by offering a, a discount. So we're seeing this really, um, I guess, there's a lot of excitement about what Giving Tuesday can be. Um, and it could be something as small as a not-for-profit posting something on Facebook for the day, or it could be as big as a, a big campaign or something like Giving Shoes Day. So tonight what we want to do is um, encourage a bit of conversation in Adelaide and Melbourne about what we can do for Giving Tuesday, what this can look like for the 3rd of December, but also what giving in Australia can look like, um, I guess, long term and, and really tap into some of the, um, the themes that Karen brought up. Yeah, sure. So in terms of who could be involved, it's really anybody. Um, so we can have like big corporations getting involved. So in the States, uh, Microsoft are involved, Blackboard are involved, um, groups like uh, like Sony were involved last year. I'm not sure if they're involved this year. So again, it taps into that sort of corporate giving. But then it can also be small organisations of just one or two people who want to support uh, social good in Australia. So whether you're a charity or whether you're a um, business, you can be involved. Um, to register on the website as a partner, you just need to be a not-for-profit doing something on the day or a business supporting a not-for-profit on the day. And uh, that's the only sort of restrictions around who can be involved. But really, this is about everybody. It's all of Australia getting involved with... Uh, I think there's a growing understanding that uh, we all need to support each other. Um, and I think corporations are understanding that more and more. So like you were saying, Michelle, that there's a lot of organisations who have sort of charity foundations or they have employee um, like volunteering schemes or they're donating their products or giving products or, or giving their money away. Um, and I think it's all about just making sure that or recognising that there are people in need who should be helped. And I think or, corporations have a great capacity to make money. Why not use that to support those who need it? Is it also true, Ben, that um, I think that this day is straight after... Um, is it Black Tuesday? The, there's that time in the US when everyone just goes crazy and does like mass amounts of shopping, and so it's a bit of an anti-consumerist day in a, like in its timing and in its method. Yeah, definitely. So, um, in terms of the actual day and why it's landing on this day in particular, um, it's because in the US they've got Cyber Monday, or they've got Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. And it's also, I think, the end of their Thanksgiving season. So people have switched on to sales and buying stuff for Christmas and um, trying to, you know, I don't know, fill their houses with stuff. But this is a good opportunity for us to reset the way that people think, especially in December, especially as people really think about giving and, and what it actually mean, uh, why it's important for us and how can we make it look different. So in terms of the parameters for the actual Giving Tuesday website and who can register a for being a partner. Um, the, the parameters that we've been given are just that 
One is designed for not-for-profits or organisations supporting a not-for-profit directly. Now, in terms of Giving Tuesday as a whole, I think it's open for anybody to be involved with. So you can use the, use the hashtag, use the, um, be part of the conversations, but I don't think we should restrict Giving Tuesday to just what's happening on the website as well. I think there's a lot of other stuff that's really worth highlighting. So part of the message of Giving Tuesday is, you know, yep, go and support a not-for-profit, donate, that's fantastic, but maybe think about, you know, supporting your neighbours or um, go and helping out a local community centre, volunteer your time in whatever way, shape or form you think that will work. Um, maybe go and help your grandma with her computer or something, you know, we can do all sorts of different ways to give back and it's really that hard of, of, you know, how do we support each other, how do we um, look after each other, how do we all work together for, um, for social good. Giving Tuesday is very much to the grassroots movement, there's no real organisation behind it, like no one's like really, I guess, benefiting directly from it. There are some organisations who are like running their own campaigns as part of the day, but the heart of Giving Tuesday is really just to encourage giving as a whole. Okay, introducing Kelvin. <laughs> G'day Ben and Adelaide and all our people here. Um, we were very supportive of the concept. We thought it was good having a focal day um, because in the world we live in with media and social media, having a focal day really helped people actually focus on it rather than just getting lost in which Tuesday was it. Also, initially for launch purposes, we thought alignment with the same date that they had in America so we could have some um, spillover of the, the Twitter trending and things like that for social media leveraging around the world on the day would be be worthwhile. Um, also to leverage the goodwill and positive outcomes from America as an encouragement to what was happening here. And then we jumped off into all sorts of interesting creativity around Melbourne Cup Day and how we could possibly leverage off the concept of Cup Day and possibly making a bet that would actually benefit more people than just yourself or the best bet you've ever made. And there are a whole lot of other ideas that were kicking around the group. I'm not sure if you can hear those clearly there. You appear to be nodding. So I presume people in Adelaide are hearing what we were saying. Yeah. And and I suppose we looked at the idea that it, it was a fun thing, it could be collaborative um, in a sense by leveraging the start of it as a giving month, starting in, with Melbourne Cup Day and then maybe finishing on Giving Tuesday. So we still stuck with that as the finish date. So we didn't completely disconnect from what was happening over there. We could leverage in a sense both dates. We could leverage also and encourage people's involvement who weren't involved at the moment in anything big or giving wise. but maybe didn't fully connect with the whole Melbourne Cup um, thing which was to do with actually gambling, but we still wanted to catch up and have a bit of a party and have a bit of fun. We're all getting together and having a bit of a drink on that day anyway. Why not provide it as the start of a giving month concept? So we could still have the Tuesday in our Giving Tuesday kickoff and then maybe finish up with the corporates and the big stuff with the website at the end. So we could actually try and dovetail the two in together. But we're also very realistic that there's no way we're going to do anything for tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, let's get, let's get real. Let's, let's, let's just give ourselves about a year or so to, to get that sort of sorted and bedded in with some people. And there, there were also some obvious concerns about trying to work out how we could package the brand and think it, think it through in such a way that for the big charities like the Salvos and some of the others that may want to be involved that have a fairly strong anti-gambling angle, the kind of message and wrapping around the concept such that um, Giving Tuesday not as an anti-gambling thing but as a, a, as a thing you could do as a community alongside. So you can have a flutter if you like but you can also make a bet that actually benefit other people and it was the best bet you're going to make this year. And so we could possibly leverage some language carefully and that's why we thought we needed a year to work it through into a more positive social thing. And big corporates could still link it up into their sweepstakes and all of that kind of stuff as well. So there's a whole range of ways we could leverage both the communities that were having a flutter and those that weren't. So yeah, we saw it as a great thing and we felt that it was well worth supporting and some of us sort of even getting creative on Twitter tonight and going um, Cup Day, uh, Giving Tuesday and hashtagging them both together so people would start tripping across the Giving Tuesday concept as a bit of viral pre-marketing. So have I summarised things well in terms of what came out of the group? Great.
Thank you. And now we'd love to hear what comes from Adelaide, and we hope you don't need to use sign language to do it for us. <laughs> Go for it. Thank, Thank you, Calvin. <laughs> Over to you, Ben. So, what's great is that you guys actually take a little bit of issue from the other end. When you looked at giving Tuesday itself, which is part of what we wanted to do tonight, I think we started the conversation off looking at, I guess, philanthropy and giving in Australia in general. So, so I think we both come together really nicely in this event. So um, I think one of the things that we talked about in general is, you know, how do we engage Australians in giving more? And I think there was, there was a lot of discussion we had here about how we need to change um, people's concepts of giving. And I think Karen brought this up uh, during her conversation about, you know, there are all different ways or there's types of organisations you can um, support, but there's also type, uh, ways that you can actually support them yourself. So we talked about, you know, how do we volunteer our time as a big part, not just look at money. Um, but then we also discussed the difficulties that that has because we need to break down traditional ideas of, of how we give, how we support, or how we contribute or connect with organisations. So, you know, it's not just changing the way that individuals feel about how we give, but also changing um, not-for-profits and charities and how they offer opportunities for people to give or to um, support. Um, I guess traditionally volunteering has been, um, I guess we have the example here of like making scones, but it could be something more like data entry or it could be marketing, it could be doing social, or even tapping into that, you know, the idea of tapping into social networks and using people as ambassadors and training them up to be spokespeople for your organisation. And maybe as part of Giving Tuesday, that, that could be what you're doing, is like um, taking a bit of time to, to build your ambassadors, to have people, I guess, pledge that they want to support your organisation for the next year um, and do all that sort of thing. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that people feel we should bring up. No? Good. So, <laughs> um, so that, that's a few things that, that we talked about. I think that's pretty exciting because I think, you know, we talk about how you can give, but then we can also talk about, um, you know, the actual initiatives that we run on Giving Tuesday. Like this Melbourne Cup idea is awesome. I think we're going to steal that idea of like um, sort of hijacking the Melbourne Cup hashtag and chucking some Giving Tuesday tweets. So, you know, a few people over yeah, over over this way and we we'll are right, we can, you know, we'll hijack it all together. Anyway, thanks so much for your uh, participation today. It's been really good. I think we'll probably keep the conversation going over here as well about, you know, giving in Australia. But, um, Rishenda, is there anything, um, or maybe, are there any other questions that people want to bring up or any other final thoughts that anyone has about Giving Tuesday or, or philanthropy? Is there an Australian incarnation of it that's starting to list some Australian not-for-profits? So if we wanted to put things on social media or telling our friends in the next month to try and get a little bit of a kick-off for this year that there are already some targets we could start to point people to which has an Australian face? Uh, there's givingtuesday.org.au which is the Australian site and you can see the Australian partners that have already signed up. And then there's also the Giving Tuesday Australia Facebook page. So we haven't done a Twitter specific for um, Australia simply because we don't have the, um, the efforts or we don't have the resources here to manage Twitter. And also in terms of like thinking long term and what happens afterwards, I think it's, it's making it manageable. It's not. I think if you type Giving Tuesday into um, Google or whatever search engine, it's smart enough to pick up the Australian um, results anyway. So be all good there.